Welcome back, everybody. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can set up your environment so that you can follow this course with all of the tools that I have and that you'll see throughout the course. Along the way, I'll mention some alternatives that you might use. It's entirely up to you because these are all just tools and I simply have my own setup that I use throughout this course. Now, the first thing you need to install is your editor. So if you already have an editor that you prefer, such as Sublime or Atom or even an IDE like WebStorm, you can totally use that. I like Visual Studio Code, so that's what I use. So in order for you to get Visual Studio Code, simply go to this link that I'm going to provide you in your resources and then hit the Download for Mac button. Now what this will do is this will trigger the installation. So simply choose the place where you want to download the actual VS Code so I'm going to choose desktop and this will download the zip folder for you. Then you simply just open up the zip and now you'll have your Visual Studio Code application where you saved your zip folder. So now if I go to my desktop folder, I see it right here. So just double click to open it and then allow your Mac to open Visual Studio Code because it's downloaded from the internet. You need to give it permission. Now. Once you've given it permission, Visual Studio Code is up and running. So you now have the same editor that I use. The only thing I would suggest you probably do is add the code shell command to your terminal. Now we'll explain more about what that actually is in a little bit later. But right now, in order for you to add it, you simply hold Command Shift and press P. Then you're going to type command. And here you'll see shell command install code command path. So simply click that and then it will install the code command to your path. Now, once you have your path set up, you're now able to use the code dot command to open up files and folders inside of your terminal, which we will do a lot in this course. Now, what is the terminal? Well, the terminal is actually going to be the main way that we navigate around our application as well as modify our files, as you'll see in this course. Now, by default, Mac comes with a terminal. So in order for you to access it, simply go to your Spotlight search and type in terminal. Once you have that, just open up the first thing you see, and this will be the terminal that you can use throughout this course. Now, with this terminal, what we need to do next is actually install Node. Now, the easiest way for us to install Node is actually to use something called NVM, which is Node Version Manager. Now, in order to install NVM, simply go to the link that I'm going to provide you inside of your resource folder. And then once you navigate to this link, scroll down to this section called installation and update and simply copy this line and then paste it into your terminal. What this will do is this will clone down the NVM package and then add it to your existing shell, which is the thing that we're running inside of our terminal. Now, once we have NVM, we have to actually close our terminal and then relaunch it. Now, once you've reopened your terminal, type in command dash V NVM. If you see nothing listed, then this means that NVM is not yet loaded to our shell. So what we have to do is we have to actually scroll down here. And we can see inside of these instructions right here on OS X, if we see that there's no NVM script, then what we have to do is first check if we have a bash profile. Now you can do this by simply typing nano and then this tilde sign slash dot bash profile. Now, if you hit this and nothing occurs, meaning that there is no bash profile, instead of nano, replace this with touch and then run nano bash profile again because touch will open a new bash profile for you. So inside of our bash profile, if at the very bottom, we see nothing related to NVM, then we need to add this line of running source bash RC. So let's just add that in right now. You can also copy paste this in if you want. Once we have that, we just need to save by hitting command X. It'll ask us if we want to save. We hit Y and then we hit enter. And now what we need to do is we need to type source tilde slash dot bash profile to upload and rerun our bash profile that we've just made changes to. 
And now if we type in NVM, we'll see that there's something here instead of NVM command not found. So now we know we have NVM. So now what we need to do is actually install Node using NVM. And the way we do that is we can actually first figure out what Node version we want to run. So let's go to the Node website, which I will link to you as well inside of your resources. And here, we'll see that the latest version is 10.16.0. So we don't need to actually manually download this from the website, we can use NVM. So go back to your terminal, and you can type in NVM install 10.16.0 or any other version of Node that you want to use. Now, you can also type in NVM MVM install node, and this will give you the latest version of node. So for us, I'm just going to use 10.16.0. And now this will install the appropriate version of node that we need. Once it's done installing, what we need to do is make sure that we use it. So in order to do that, we can just say NVM use 10.16.0. And now we'll be using the right version of node. We'll also see that NPM was installed as well. And NPM is what we're going to use to manage the packages, which are the libraries that we use inside of our JavaScript applications. So this is really good. We have both of them installed now, and we can check by typing node-v as well as npm-v. And here we see that we have both installed on our computer. So at this point, it's actually perfectly fine to continue with the course. You have node, you have NPM, you have your terminal, and you have your editor. Now, the thing is that I use Yarn instead of NPM. Yarn is simply another package manager that Facebook made during a time when MP had had some issues. But NPM is perfectly stable now, and both are pretty equal in terms of the features and the speed regarding package management. So if you want to use NPM and not install Yarn, you can definitely do so. You can simply look at the different commands with NPM that you need in order to run commands, instead of using the yarn ones that I do. But if you want to use yarn, just go to the yarn link that I provide you in your resources, scroll down to the installation script, and then copy that line right there. Then you go back to your terminal, we clear it, and then we paste it in. And now this will install yarn into your computer. Now, once you have yarn, you just need to check whether or not it's there. So simply type in yarn-v, and if you see a version, now you also have yarn. So now you're able to do everything that I do in this course with yarn, and you can switch between yarn and MP freely. Ideally, in one project, however, you should use either one or the other. You should not use both NPM and yarn in the same folder. Now, keeping that in mind, you're fully set up to move on with the course. So I'll see you in the next lesson.